Hi, my name is Andres Cabezas Corchone from Chile, South America. I represent the Chilean Association of Positive Psychology as a president and also editor-in-chief of the Latin American Journal of Cypos. And also I am director of the Latin American Center of Applied Positive Psychology. First of all, I want to say thanks, express my gratitude to Dr. Sunil Saini from India um, for his invitation. Uh, for me, it's an honor um, to share the research and the situation here in Latin America uh, with you. Thanks a lot first. Well, um, I'm going to speak about the challenges of CIPOS, positive psychology in Latin America. I don't know if you have a little background about CIPOS. Uh, I suppose many people know about, but many people doesn't know. Well, the positive psychology is a new paradigm, new model uh, to study some old thing, happiness. In the year 99, Martin Seligman, as a president of the APA, he took about the aims of psychology in the world. He said, we are wrong researching, looking, and understanding the human being like a suffering man. We know we have happiness and also we have unhappiness. But are we looking for well-being, our happiness, or only about disease, disorders, psychopathology? Well, the aims of positive psychology with Martin Seligman and a lot of researchers like Barbara Fredrickson, Mihaly Sixan Mihaly, Todd Kashdan, Robert Biswas Diner, Sonja Libomirsky, and many others, was three aims. The first aim was to research and study about positive emotions. We know when we study in the university the emotions, we speak about feelings and emotions, but we understand like negative or positive emotions. But negative emotions are not negative, are unlike emotions, but it's really functional to the adaptation and the evolution to the human being. The first aim was study, for example, happiness, forgiveness, optimism, joy. The second aim was the positive traits. When we study psychology of personality, we understand like the difference with a state and with a trait, but we always look to the disease, the disorders of personality, like narcissism, obsessive, uh, disocial or antisocial, uh, and many others. Now in positive psychology, we are studying positive traits. What is positive traits? In the year two, 2004, Martin Seligman and Chris Peterson show us a book called Character Strengths, a handbook of classification. This handbook of classifications have a lot of strengths of character. There are 24 strengths characters, but that strengths character have virtues like the categories and subcategories. Virtues like templates, virtues like many others. But the character strengths are 24. And you can look and you can study and you can see what is your positive traits and your strengths. The third aim was the positive institutions. Why the positive institutions? We know about we born in an institution, hospital. Then we go to school, it's an institution. Then we go to the grad, to the university. Then we work in an institution. And when we die, in institution, cemetery. We are institutionalized human beings. And what are doing the institutions about our happiness, about our well-being? That's the third aim. 
The fourth aim proposed by Alejandro Castro Solano y Lupano from Argentina, they say the fourth aim was the positive relationships. Well, that's a brief, brief introduction about positive psychology. We have epistemological views like hedonic and eudaimonic. Hedonic is to increase the more happy mood, the more positive emotions, yes? And eudaimonic is about Aristoteles when he write the Nicomachean ethic. He said, we don't have to look happiness only in the pleasure, only in good things. We have to look that in relationships, meaning, purpose. There are two epistemological lines, hedonic and also eudaimonic. Well, this speech about the challenges of Cyprus in Latin America have a begin. What's up with that begin? Well, I, I research in social psychology also and clinical psychology and there is a human development index mm -hmm, that measure three things and they say and they publish all the years that results. What is that? What is the three indicators about Human Development Index, HDI? First, it's the long, healthy life, life expectancy at birth, life expectancy index. Second, the knowledge about education, mean years of schooling, expected years of schooling, educational index. And third, a decent standard of living, GNI per capita. It's the money. Mm -hmm. Um, the second is about the alphabetism and analphabetism. We are Latin Americans, and as Latin Americans, we are in a view of development. And um, the nations, the big nations, measures our development, but they correlate our de developments with well-being. First, I have a doubt with that. What is my doubt with that? I think, well, if Chile, if Chile have a good business work, a good expansion in Latin America, as the jaguar of Latin America, what is happening about the increase of prevalence in mortality about suicide in adolescents? What is the increase about the prevalence and incidence about mood disorders and anxiety? Why are decreasing the levels of subjecting psychological and social well-being? There is also an increase of work absenteeism, more indebtedness, and also more level of divorce. My question is, how we can be in development with that indicators, that negative indicators? Well, there is a hypothesis. For example, the state of art are there are there is an increment about increment, cierto, about IDH mm -hmm, indicators of development human. That human development have an impact directly in the modification about culture and motivational values. Yes? And that modification about culture and motivational values have a new modification in the impact of our quality of life. For example, Gerd Hofstede in Holland, he made a division about culture, about individualism and collectivism. For example, Chile and also India are collectivism, but in transition to individualism. Then, Shalom Schwartz from Israel, he elaborated a model based in research with many people that he called motivational values. You can find motivational values like power, autonomy, benevolence, and that's motivational values compose that motivational values are part of individualism and collectivism. The question is, Chile have many people 
in welding, but they are experimenting security, conformity, power, unknownness, hedonism, stimulation, auto redirection, universalism. What is with that? For example, we have to know something. First of all, we have individualism and collectivism. The research shows like the peoples in bias of development, like South America, have a transition to individualism and that have a correlate with welding. For example, individualism, it's the power, social power, authority, uh, accomplishment, mm -hmm. success. Individualism also is hedonism, enjoy life, stimulation, self-direction, creativity, freedom, chance to make a decision. The collectivism um, have different motivational values like benevolence, it's helping, forgiving, being loyal, being responsibility, uh, honesty, a lot of more. Tradition always, it's accepting my part in this life. Conformity, it's evidence, self-disciplines, good models, and a lot of things more. The question is, Chile where is Chile in an individualist or collectivist? Chile have a lot of Soviet welding, increased welding or decreased welding. Well, the research shows something not so good. That is the part about the dark side of positive psychology. What was that? For example, Chile was growing economically, politically, and a lot of things more. The index of human well-being said Chile are growing in development, but this correlates with well-being. That's false. Why that's false? In our research with, with Chilean professional, we found that the universalism and the benevolence are motivational values of collectivism. That correlates positive and significantly statistically with well-being. And also power and hedonism shows a negative correlate with well-being. What means that? That means that Chilean professionals are growing in human development in a transition to individualism, but the transition to individualism take us not to well-being life. All the opposite. And then we have, we do a different statistical tests like uh, multiple regression, lineal regression, uh, to have more uh, explication, not only correlates. And the explication, it's hard. Hmm? Um, we shows that um, the well-being in the Chilean professionals um, are explained by universalism, it's help, benevolence, family, benevolence, and the suffering are show about the suffering are show about the power, success, and successful. That's that because we are in transition to bad mood. To negative traits. And then, what is our discussion? How we in Latin America can do something with that? Actually, in Latin America, we found, we are founding uh, three years ago a Latin American network of applied positive psychology. We want to do something different, nor, nor only applying the model of the United States in South America, because we always use models from unhappy continents in our happy continent. Latin America is the more happy continent with the Caribbean. And we have to do some emic purpose. Emic purpose means that we have to create theory in the field, not only validations or adaptations. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you understand my bad English. Um, I have um, many thanks. I want to say my gratitude and also with the kindness of 
Dr. Suni Saini and this invitation to the fourth ICPAS in Goa, India. Have a good day. Best regards from Chile. Goodbye.